Hey, this is Adam and Matt, and here's what's coming up on this week's CarCast. The first day I got in the car, and another one was coming directly at me. I didn't notice too many on the road, but the guy was coming yeah. right at me, and the guy gave me the big thumbs up, like like we're in the same fraternity. Yeah. And I didn't know how to respond, like the proper response, because there's part of me that was like, hey, I wouldn't pay 70 grand for this car. I'd be driving an M3. But I, I'm not going to be able to convey all that with one hand movement. So then there's other part, well, I don't want to be a douche and not give him the thumbs up. Yeah. And like I'm in the Cadillac Club yeah. with him. But on the other hand, I'm not in the Cadillac Club with him. I'm just driving. I'm just driving. So what, you just turn your head in shame. No, like, I gave don't him, talk to me. I gave him the hey, man. You know, I yeah. want him. I want him to feel good about his purchase. Listen for free through iTunes, the free Adam Carolla app, or visit AceCarCast.com. You're listening to the Ace Broadcasting Network. Hello, my little ham and Gruyere frittatas. It's me, Allison Rosen. And before the show officially starts, this is like a unofficial start. It's a soft launch, which I always think it's weird when people say that. And it's weird that I just said that. Anyway, I wanted to say a few things before the show starts. For one, it is um, like 2.30 in the a.m. in New York, and that is where I am recording this little soft launch. <clears throat> if you flew all the way here just to record this. No, I'm here because I just did some shows at Caroline's uh, with the Adam Carolla show, which I am on. And I am not making sense. I'm not drunk. I'm just tired. But anyway, um, it is crazy being back in New York because uh, I used to live here, as you guys probably know, and some people feel I mention it too often. But I lived here for a long time, and all sorts of formative things happened for me here. And it's really great and weird and overly emotional being back. Um, and now I'm sad that I am leaving New York, but I'm excited that I'm flying back tomorrow. So there's that. By the time you hear this show, I will be back. And I had a wonderful flight, hoping if I say it, it comes true. Um, let's see, what do I need to tell you? Well, June 22nd, Friday, please come out and see my live show at Nerd Melt. Uh, Tickets are not very expensive. You can find out more info on allisonrosen.com. And the guests are Paul Gilmartin of the Mental Illness Happy Hour podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts. And then also Michael Rosas, who's a musician who used to be in the band Smile and then was in the band Satisfaction. And he plays solo and he's he's amazing. He's, I believe he's actually won the title of Best Orange County Musician. Uh, once or more than once, and I think he's amazing, and he's an old friend of mine, he's going to play a couple songs, and he's also going to chime in on the other stuff, because he's really witty and hilarious, so please come out for the, and there might be other surprise guests as well, so please come out for that, that would be great. Um, Also, I have been putting Angora's songs, that's my old band, at the very end of the show for the last two shows, and people have loved that, so... I will put one at the end of this show, and I'll tell you about that if you stick around till the very end, then you can hear that. It's As I said last week, it's like an Easter egg, um, but not really at all. Okay. Um, also, I think I should probably do an iTunes comment of the week. So here is where Gary will put the song, I think. Here it goes. Allison Rosen brings you the best iTunes comments of the week. All right. This week's comment comes from Ramy G. It says, Love Allison and her show. I listen every week. This show gives me a reason to look forward to Monday mornings. Thanks for sharing your music, too. My favorite TV show right now is Mad Men. That show is amazing, and I'm sad that the season is over. Keep up the great work, and hopefully one day I'll be able to travel from Sacramento to see one of your live shows in the near future. Yes, please, I hope you do. And it occurs to me that if you're hearing this show for the first time, you're thinking, why is she or he... Uh, mentioning his or her favorite TV show, and that's because each week I ask you guys to, you know, answer a specific question, and this week it was, what's your favorite TV show? And I have to say, I'm watching Mad Men as well, and those last two episodes of this season totally got under my skin. Holy 
moly. Um, and I can't believe I have to wait a whole another many months till the show comes back. So yeah. All right. This week, here's the question that I want you to answer. Which is cuter? Puppies, babies, or ducklings? Once again, which is cuter? Pupplies, babelings, or duckies? No, puppies, babies, or ducklings? I have to say that it's a push between puppies and ducklings. I'm sorry, humans. You ha- you do not have the cutest tiny things. Babies get cute, but if I'm going to look at photos, it's going to be photos of puppies or ducklings. All right. What else do I need to tell you? Um, the guest for this episode is Carrie Kenny Silver. She's really funny and really smart and really nice. She's all of those things. Um, and I really enjoyed having her on my show. And as you can hear in my voice right now, I'm tired. So I think I'm going to just, just say, Hey, here's the show. Because if I keep talking, then pretty soon I'll talk about the fact that I feel like tonight I learned that I've been showering wrong for my whole life because I don't use a washcloth. <laughs> oh man, I know that I know that I should just re-record this and sound less like a person who can't speak, but I'm going to leave that in there. Gary, you leave that in there. Um, washcloth or loofah, or exfoliating thingamajigamanoo, mar- maroony thing. Um, I just use my hands in soap. Is that weird? I guess I'm just, I am going to talk about that now. Everyone else uses some kind of cleaning implement. I don't. And I feel like, how did I not know that you're supposed to? Okay, so that's one thing. And the other thing is, um, sometimes when I try to say washcloth, washcloth comes out. What's that about? It's only happened once, but I feel like it's, you know, it was enough. It was a, a thing. All right. I've said too much. I love you guys. Come to my show, the live one, and enjoy this episode. And if you want to hear another Angora song, just wait around to the end. Okay, bye. Love you. Allison, Rose. Hey everyone, hi, hello, it's me, Allison Rosen, and welcome to another exciting episode of Allison Rosen is Your New Best Friend. My guest today is Carrie Kenny Silver, who you may know from Reno 911 and The State and a zillion other things. What hello. A- Hello. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I was impressed by your theme song, and it just occurred to me while it was playing that that would never work for my name. Carrie, Kenny, no. Silver is your new best friend. Oh, that's not too bad, yeah, though. You, you kind of made good. it work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, so that's yeah. talent. Great. I'll never have my own podcast. You could change your name, and then to you could Allison have one. Rosen. Or to Mark Marin. KKS. Mark Marin. Marin is your new best friend. Oh, that's good. That's good. You wanna mm-hmm. you brought some balls to it. it, yeah. And hello, Dustin. Hello. Thank you for joining us so soon after the last one, which is in um, podcast time a week later, but in real time, like five minutes later. Hey, Gary. What's up, guys? How's it going? Going good. How are you? I'm um, I'm good. It still sounds weird and hollow, and and I'm just gonna be an annoying cunt about it by bringing it up. So I'm just gonna say it, and then I'm just gonna forget about it. And I'm going to give you that. If you weren't sitting in that tin can over there, I maybe it would sound better. <laughs> Come out of the can, This is how Allison. I travel, though. Just like in The Rescuers, I'm in a sardine can on the back of an albatross. That's how I get around. So anyway. That's what makes the show exciting. The fact that who knows if I'll get here. Yeah, and that we're in an albatross. Or that you're in an albatross. I know. They've got to work that into the song. So, Carrie Kenny Silver. Yes. Uh, before the show started, 
we were talking a little bit about the fact that you and I were both on this women in comedy panel. Yes, and that's I was where we saying met. I don't want I don't want to like pick this thing apart too much and say anything negative about it because um, I'm friends with people who put it on and who moderated. But I do think we need to talk about it a little bit because what the hell was that, right? Yeah. We met on this uh, on this. It was a women in comedy panel. Yeah, and I I. Uh, I think I pissed everybody off because I think the first thing that I said was not to piss everybody off, which when you start with that, yeah. chances are you're, you're, you're headed deficit. for pissing it's people like off. It's like when you say no offense. Yeah, or when you say I'm totally – I'm to- I'm being totally honest with or you. Or with all due respect. Or like, I'm not. sorry, yeah. but – Yeah, I hate to say this. Ugh. But I did. I said I hate to piss everybody off. But I, why, why are we have – why is there even a panel with the title women in comedy? I mean I, that – it's like enough talking about – I mean I'm so thrilled at the success of Bridesmaids. It deserves that success. It was an unbelievable piece of work. But for people to say, wow, finally women are doing comedy mm-hmm. is when women um, have been doing insulting comedy to those so long. You know, main, minor basic cable celebrities such as myself. That's right. Yeah, and the thing is there were just a lot of questions like this has been an amazing year for women in comedy. What do you think is going to happen the rest of the year and where do you see it going? Mm-hmm. Like that's like an essay question. Yeah, I don't I know. think in that way, and I also can't. The thing is that no one on that panel thinks of themselves as uh, specifically a woman in comedy. Right. I never even really thought about the fact that I was female in comedy. I think until I started working on the Adam Carolla show, and that's the first time that I really encountered people who do walk around thinking women can't be funny. You're funny for a girl. Right. Yeah. Like, I think you're funny, and I never think women are funny. That's yeah. why I hear yeah. that before. I realized it right when we um, graduated college, because the state was the sketch comedy group that I started with at NYU. We met at NYU. And just organically over the years, through the, through the four years of college, the group ended up being myself and 10 guys. And when we graduated and got our show on on MTV, which was titled The State, um, they did say to us, so how about some color? How about some other women? And I remember us feeling kind of shocked by that, you know, innocently so, because it it was what it was. And we were also kind of, you know, cocky about it too. (laughs) Like, this is who we are, take us or leave us. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's still, you know, it's shocking. But great. But great that women are, you know, getting recognized. Okay. But I also don't like the thing of, you know, it's about time. Well, I've, right. I've, 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 it's always been time. I've been very lucky then, if that's the case, because I've had a TV show for many years and I'm a girl and I do funny jokes. Do you encounter that attitude though? I mean, do you run into people who are like, What's that? Well, I am going to ask you that. What is that like? What was that like being the only woman in the state? Yeah, people ask that, and that's fair. I mean, I don't have a penis, or it's not as big as theirs. <laughs> but I ha- had it removed. Um, what did you do with it? I put it in a jar. Smart. Um, you know, for Halloween. Yes. Um, is I, now is that so you can reattach it, or just to shock people? No, just to shock people. Right. The kids go. The kids are ter- It's terrifying. I have a penis in a jar. That's scary, Allison. It's in my purse. I'll show you at the end. Um, yeah, no, that that is something. That's that's not a silly question. Um, it was great. I got to play a lot of female characters, but a lot of the guys played female characters too, and I played male characters. We just did a reunion show last year or the year before for the San Francisco Sketch Fest, mm-hmm. which was incredible. We did all new material, and it was so fun to be performing sketch live again. Um, and I think I played – Five women and four men. I mean, it. Um, you know, sometimes it's funnier that a dude is in a dress than me. So, was it something that you thought of a lot at the time, though? Did you think, you know, here I am, the only female in this sketch group, or was it? Because I, after the panel, I said to you that it was only when I started thinking about what are they going to ask us on this panel, and I started thinking about all the different things that I was like, hey, you are the only female in that group. And, it, I, and I'm such a fan of the state, but I had never really thought of it in that way. I, like I just that. thought you were all funny. I like that, and I, I, that was one of my proudest sort of feelings about coming out of the state was that not a lot of people say to me, oh, you know, you were the only girl in the state, and 
dot, dot, dot. It's just you guys were so funny or, you know, that one sketch that, that you were in. But uh, And I appreciate that just because that says something hopefully to our talent of being able to work together and morph into different characters. And um, yeah, but I mean, that's a perfect example of feeling like why why is this an issue i mean i, I it it i'm more if, if you're talking about personality wise i'm more of a dude than some of the guys in the group you know as far as like you know potty talk and what you would think of as the typical funny guy i mean i there was never a feeling like oh we can't discuss that because carrie's in the room um and it i'm i get offended when that in fact it was brought up at the panel a couple people said you know i do male jokes you know AKA yeah. fart jokes and stuff, and I thought that why is why is why is that scene? You know, I mean, it was an embarrassing point to you know raise my torch to to say <laughs> I do fart jokes as well. But you know, why is that particularly male and why right. is particularly female? It's like I you know I don't sit around making jokes about my period, and you know the guys you know don't just sit around talking about their balls, although they do talk about their balls a lot. We do talk about our you do. balls a lot. You, the first, I just met you out in the lobby, and you're like, "I'm like, how are you?" You're like, my balls are a little sweaty. Yeah, I was like, "That's weird." Yeah, but he's a guy. We just always figure that you want to know. Yeah, and I just so you know, I'm in the middle of my cycle. Okay. Because I know you were wondering that. Yeah, that is always. What and I'm by the middle too. of my cycle, I mean uh, I'm, I'm pretty much ovulating. So try to stay about a foot away from me. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll try and. Uh, Hold down your uh, raging sexual attraction yes. that your hormones are well, my, forcing you to have. My eggs are, your are pretty shrivelly at this point, so I don't know that you would have much impact in there. But but you we, could try. We could try. I'd be sure. willing to try. Dustin, do you have a favorite ball of your own? Oh, <laughs> well, that makes it hard, doesn't it? Um, well, there's only two. Else to choose from, presumably. <laughs> yeah. But it's like uh, it's, like, it as a unit? it's like choosing your favorite kid, whereas someone else's ball. I mean, then Sophie's you know, choice. Which I, I ball can, goes? I can offend someone. Oh, else. good. Um, the left. Is it you like it? More? Does it get caught less or? No, neither That'd of them. Be ball get, right if, for if us. If something's going to get caught, it's going to be the shaft. Okay. Yeah, is it camera right or ball right? Right. Your left is like when you're looking down, it's on the left? Oh, true. That'd be – when we were doing the operation, we'd have to do that thing where on the ball, on the ball they're not ruling. they would, Yeah, they would write no <laughs> to make sure that they were getting yeah, the right ball. Yeah, but does that – see, if I'm the surgeon, I think, does that mean no, I don't want this ball anymore? <laughs> or, or, or does that mean no, or don't no, touch I'm this one? Or no, I'm done with it. Take it away. Right. Yeah. I feel like – yeah. I feel like you'd have to put the writing like up into your thigh. Maybe, maybe a whole paragraph. Yeah, maybe we just have directions. to write write small and be really explicit. Mm -hmm. uh, no, don't take this ball off. And this by that why, I mean, you know, I want to keep it at the end of the procedure. This is why I've never had my balls removed because I'm worried that they're going to misunderstand. Yeah, and I know. Take yeah. the wrong one. Yeah. But you trusted them to remove your small penis. Yeah. It it's, fell it's off. Easy. It fell off. <laughs> How? Like a belly button. Oh, that's... Mm -hmm. Ew. And like my, my gallbladder and my... My appendix. You just don't need them anymore. They shrivel up. Right. Like wisdom teeth as well. Mm -hmm. Sort of vestigial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how did the state come together? We were a, a, a comedy club in college. We went to NYU and we were, most of us were acting students. I think it was half and half. Half acting students, half film students. And Michael Ian Black and I, whose real name is is uh, Mike Michael Schwartz, mm -hmm. Um, he and I were in a creative writing class together, so we met, met first day of school. Tom Lennon and I had known each other previously. We went to acting summer camp together when we were uh, 17. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, we, I feel like Michael was the one who brought me the flyer or I brought him the flyer to the class and said, oh, there's a, auditions for a comedy club starting here because there already was a comedy club. It was very hard to get into. It was called the Sterile Yak. <laughs> And the, um, Mo Willems ran that group, who's now a very famous, very successful children's book author. If any of you oh, have children. Yeah. Oh, boy. Mo wrote, Willems. He wrote that elephant story. Yeah, he wrote Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, and he wrote Nuffle Bunny. Uh -huh. He's a big deal. and he's Adam mocked one of his books mercilessly. Oh, well, Adam's not a fan of children's books. Yeah. Well, well, I think, you know what? Mo Willems is the kind of guy who isn't a fan of children's books either, and he started writing them. And as a parent, I'm so grateful because they are actually funny. Um, but so Mo had this other group and he was an elder classman and, you know, was 
too scary to even think about getting in. So we started our own, and we called ourselves The New Group, mm. which was just brilliant because we were The New Group. Um, <laughs> and then there were, uh, you know, different – you know, combinations of people going in and out of the group. But ultimately, by the end of our senior year, when MTV said, would you like a show, um, that's the, the the 11 of us that you saw was the final group. And how did you guys make decisions with 11 of you? Because I was in a band uh, years ago. I know you were in a band as well, but I was in a band years ago, and there were four of us, and decision-making was difficult with that many. So I always think when you have, like, the Von Trapps plus four, how do you yes. do it? Well, uh, we would all put on outfits made out of drapes. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Put you on the Um, same page. Yeah. Uh, No, we would – it was hard. I mean that's a lot of people remember the most frustrating part of the group as as being decision-making time because we were also incredibly passionate about what we did. Um, And, you know, most of us thought we were right and would argue vehemently and – I tended to sit back until I would explode and and about you know some fart joke and <laughs> chairs were thrown and um, yeah it was crazy it was really hard to do that but ultimately I look back at the body of work and I think um, we made a mostly good decisions so whatever however we got there I think it worked mm-hmm. and your current or you just finished doing a movie I just finished a movie with Jeff Garlin who I adore. Um, from Curb Your Enthusiasm, from many things, but that's where people mostly know him from. Um, He did an improv movie that he directed, and it's uh, called Dealing with Idiots. And uh, he and Nia Vardalis play uh, Little League parents of a little boy who's terrible at Little League. And then myself and Gina Gershon play moms to an adopted boy from the Dominican Republic who's the best boy on the team. And Fred Willard was in it and Richard Kind and it was ridiculous. It's so – I mean, you know, Fred is a hero of mine and to to sit and improv with him was spectacular and Richard Kind is, is an absolute genius. So, And you were saying that they – or uh, Jeff Garland didn't give you guys much direction? Yeah. No, he really is – I guess I didn't – never did Curb but I, I guess their sort of thing was to, to – really keep it as spontaneous as possible. So that's what Jeff wanted to do. And I'm someone who likes information and I like to do my homework and and at least have a couple of jokes in the can because God forbid they call action and you're just, you know, yeah. staring into the camera, um, which you shouldn't do anyway. Um, but I uh, – there was none of that. Maybe. Unless they say to camera. Right. That's a great lesson for all of you listening. Mm-hmm. OK. Let's take a moment. Okay. So should I not have been staring into the microphone this whole time we were doing this? That's different. That okay. just records your voice. You should speak into it, though. Okay. Uh, you really? Right into it? <laughs> well, I'm constantly reminded that I should be. I know. I see your guy put yeah. a little... Please, Please angle, angle your, your mic, mic so, so you're talking, talking into, into the, the top. top. You're the one who brought up that it sounded tinny. I'm trying to help. Okay, thank you. All right. Anyway, before I interrupted you with my unfunny joke, you were saying you, you, you like to have a couple jokes in the can. I like to, I don't know. I like to be a little bit prepared, um, but he wanted none of that. So, um, you know, I hope, I hope I did all right. He seemed happy, but you never know till they edit. But that's fun editing, you know, improv movies and shows are made in the editing room. People would say to us all the time, oh, my, everything that came out of your mouth on Reno is golden videotape is cheap and and we would shoot an hour to get a two minute piece so um, sometimes we were funny and sometimes we just have really good editors and in Reno 911 how much direction would you get going into a sketch we would uh, Tom Lennon and Ben Grant and I we created it and we would write an outline for the guests or for the for the the main cast of Mm -hmm. sheriffs and we would, you know, if it was um, for a, a guest that was bringing in their own character, we would tell them almost nothing. Just, in fact, we would call them and say, "What do you want?" I mean, Nick Swartzen, I remember <laughs> he called in and said, "I, I need, I need a pair of short shorts and some roller skates." <laughs> and I just thought, I don't. And we would say to them often, "I don't want to know what you're doing. Just show up and surprise us." Um, and then when it would come to the the relationship things in the in the station between the other sheriffs, we would. Um, you know, try and give an outline as far as where we wanted the, you know, ultimately at the end of this, there's going to be, you know, um, a fundraiser or we're going to, you know, have to 
fight the mayor on this and and so that you know those would be given but it was pretty loose as well but not as loose as, as this film that I just did so I'm excited to see it I'm curious to see what it's going to be no Me too do you have a a lot of familiarity with that world uh, from your own experience the you like little league or youth sports oh world? yes Oh, yes. And that that was one advantage I had, I felt, was I'm in it now. I have a six-year-old son. And I mean, he it does, is ridiculous. It's insane. And in fact, a few of the things I pitched to Jeff, he said, I can't, there's no way I can use that because it, no <laughs> one will believe it. Absolutely no one will believe it. My son is in T-ball now, and people are fucking nuts. I mean, there is – we played a team a few weeks ago – and every parent on the team was holding a clipboard. And I was like, what the fuck are you writing? They're four. <laughs> yeah. What are they, are they What are you notes? writing down? The first baseman is, hold, is holding they're, they're a They're charting a their hitting tendencies. Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so it's, yeah, it's, it was very helpful to me in my relationship with, with my fake son. And in real life, though, you have, do you just have one son? We do. I wouldn't say old? just, though. No, I wouldn't. Have you ever met a six-year-old boy? No, it sounds like a handful. Who's, oh, no, quote, I'm unquote, sure I have, but... spirited. <laughs> That's what we say now. It's not a pain in the ass. He's spirited. Right. Will you have more kids, though, do you no. think? No. No. No, he's amazing. But, you know, I think we always knew we would only have one. We went into it with the one-and-done attitude, and I never thought I could have kids. So it was kind of a miracle and kind of great, and we, you know, we're not gamblers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I'm no spring chicken. I don't have children. I was going to say. Yeah, I know. You can. There's like a. There's sort of an aura of uh, agedness mm-hmm. coming off me. It's a stench, really. Yeah. It's asper cream. Mm-hmm. And the tinniness. And the, that's that, <laughs> right. the, that comes with the age. You can't sign. smell that, though. The telltale sign. But I would like to have children. Yeah. But uh, but. Maybe that's the calcification of your voice box, actually. It's nothing. You're blaming Gary for some mechanical failure. But I it's, know. It's inside me. It might be emotional polyps. <laughs> well, I how, think so. Is, it, is this, you know, let me know if I'm overstepping my oh, boundaries. Oh, no. But I, talk, I talk about How it. old are you? I just turned 37. Oh, you're good. Okay. You're good. Thank you. If you were 42, I'd say, you know, you, there's got a little work to do. Right. Let's hit the singles bars tonight. Yeah. No, no, I'm in a relationship. Oh, it's okay. more like the mechanics of it sure. and the biology of it. People don't realize that it's, it is, I didn't realize, I should say, that, that it's a big deal. And Getting I pregnant? just thought you get, you know, you have sex yes. or you walk by a guy in your bathing suit and you get pregnant and then you put them to your boob and they drink your milk and, and you send them off to college. It's a little bit more complicated than that. I mean, there, there's a place called the lactation station. What when I, when my son was born, they came in, the, uh, the nurse came in and said, a breastfeeding uh, lacta- no, a lactation consultant will be in to see you. And I was like, a lacta- I need someone to teach me how to squirt milk out of my boobs. I think I got this. Hmm. And sure enough, it's hard. It's all hard. Nobody told me any of it. And... Um, it's all – I don't know. Maybe we complicate things in the modern world. Now, I was actually just thinking about this recently. That's been pretty much my experience with every rite of passage mm-hmm. is that I, what I think will come naturally mm-hmm. actually feels awkward and takes a while to get. And I'm talking about even my first kiss. Mm-hmm. I just assumed – I didn't spend time kissing pillows or doing – or my arm or whatever other girls were doing. I just figured it'll just make sense when it happens. And instead, I like pursed my lips in this weird way and like kind of – like made fish lips and moved them back and forth, and the guy was like, "What the hell are you doing?" I think everybody like, I don't does to that, you. don't they? Yeah, I had gnashed teeth. You got to, you got like there was tooth on tooth. Uh, oh, oh, ouch! Braces ac- on activity. braces. No, there was no braces, fortunately, because then we could have actually gotten tangled, like like dogs in heat. That, mm-hmm. that would have been instead. Bad. You got her dentures. And no, instead we just like we just like. There was like it was like uh, rams competing for oh. the woman, like when they when they hit horns together. That right. was what the kiss was like. It was oh, just like so hard, awkward. you know. It's supposed to be you know, like soft and romantic. See, that's Instead, why I'm going to was... be there for all of my sons first. That's I'm a good. helicopter parent, and the first time he kisses, first time he has sex, I'm not going to be overbearing. No. I'm just going to. Mommy's here for you. Right. You might want to use less tongue. 
Do you think that you'll be in the back kind of pantomiming? Oh, yeah. Them, like, no, I already have charts made, flip good. charts. And, See, that's uh, good. You flash can't, cards. Yeah. Because there's too much that could go wrong. Oh, so much could go wrong. And then that would be a really crushing experience what for the kid. What if he clashes his teeth for the first time? He'll never yeah. forget that. I, well, I've said this, uh, I think, actually, on the show a couple of times. I always feel like uh, I wish I'd had the older brother to, like, oh, teach yeah. me the things in a, you know, the just the worst things to avoid. Right. Um, and or I guess theoretically, like uh, a parent could have intervened and right. said, hey, listen, you're going to you know, you might be kissing soon. Don't, no, I love you know, it. Though. Don't lead with the teeth. I love the innocence. I think I, I want to keep my son. My son is very tall and it's very sweet because he's incredibly innocent and very big. And we I, we didn't teach him the the words that a big brother may have taught him. In fact, I mean, we were so prude that we didn't even teach him the word fart because I knew I would hear it a mm-hmm. hundred times a day. So I just, of course, like a caveman, he came up with his own name for it, and he calls them tushy burps, oh. which I feel like we need to. That's perfect. Wikipedia that. Ma- yeah, make that a we'll thing. trademark that. Yeah, yeah. Trademark. Urban tushy burps. At least. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so cute! Isn't it good? Yeah, because every because once he knows them, like from a big brother or an old kid, and this just all day is just going to be my balls, my dick, my farts, right? Because that's my husband. Okay, now oh. when <laughs> <laughs> like when, where do you want to go for dinner? My balls, my dick. Right. Well, no wonder you were attracted to him. Oh, so attractive! How did you guys meet? We met on a show. My husband's a cinematographer. Mm. He's a director of photography for television right. programming. He does uh, Two and a Half Men and The Big Bang Theory Oh, currently. I have not heard of those. No. They're new, fledgling mm-hmm. projects. I wish them the best, yes, though. Yes. A just gentleman mm. named Ashton Couchere. He's, he's French. just starting out. He's a French, French boy. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to do well. He's cute. He has terrible acne. Does he really? Oh. No. He glows. It's, a, you know, the, 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 the truth about... You know, certain people like that. You think, oh, everybody's airbrushed. Not this one. Yeah. This gentleman, this boy's got some, he glows. He's I would, like J-Lo I, skin. I'd like to see him in person. See, I and I, I, I bought that he needed proactive. Oh, you did? Yeah. No. I, I believed you. No. You mm-hmm. sold it. I really did. Yeah. No, it was a bit. I've heard that Kim Kardashian in real life is more beautiful than anyone else in the whole world. I'm not buying that. Yeah, I feel. See, she looks like someone who secretly has bad skin. I feel like that too. Yeah, yeah. Why is my friend covering for her? Oh, I don't know. Who's this friend? Is her name Sarah? Is her name Kanye West? No. Mm. I mean, not that I, not that I'm aware. Mm. I, I think, think it's just know. Sarah, mm. right? Because that'd be weird if mm-hmm. her, his, her name was Kanye West, but her nickname was maybe Sarah. Maybe it's maybe Kanye West is her middle name. Mm. I'm gonna have to probe that I'm further. Get to the bottom of this. I know. So, Dustin, I need I need to get to the bottom of the fact that. When you were uh, entering business school, you had to take an improv class. What? Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's it's part of the orientation program. We have I forget <laughs> if, it was, if it was a whole day. I think it was just a half day of instruction. And I can say from the half day of instruction, wherein business school students attempted to do improv, that I think it's good. I'm assuming that not many MBAs were cast on your film. Uh, <laughs> not and, although Ken Jong, <clears throat> okay, the oh, doctor. Right. Ken Jong is a go. bona fide, and he's not just a sometimes weekend half day doctor. He's the real deal. Yeah. Um, so now I just said that so you could feel bad about yourself. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, listen, I'm a, a part time podcast sidekick and an MBA. So, I mean. You're breaking the mold. Yeah. You are. Take, take that, mm. Ken Jong. Mm. Mm. He's I'm trying gonna... to clear this frog out of my throat um, quietly. Oh, take this. Try this. Oh, it involves sucking. Oh, I can do that. Here. You know what that is? Um, I, I don't. Look, I just pulled something out of my pocket. It looks like a fruit it. snack. It's so, you know who turned me on to these? Jeff Garland, because I had a froggy throat. They're, it's a black black currant flavor. Oh, I can do that. They're good. There it seems go. like something that's kind of like a jelly thing. It is. You suck on it and it soothes your throat. Okay. But anyway, uh, MBAs are not good at improv is, is the – That's the um, bottom line. The bottom line from the story. Um, but what was, what was the point of it, to teach you guys uh, yeah, to – Yeah, so in theory, it's fantastic. I mean, I think it – like right. you were talking about um, a friend of yours who teaches uh, science, Alan scientists. Alan Alda oh, yeah. is the Alan friend. Alan Alda teaches 
improv to scientists, I which I think is so him. brilliant. I love that, and I love him. Go ahead. Yeah, so the idea is to, it's like... Loosen you up, or...? Well, it, it was more about um, teamwork, okay. because you do some, a bunch of group assignments, and, and the point of that is that when you go into the workplace, most things are team-based, and you right. have to be able to collaborate, and... Um, and get everyone pulling in the same direction and so forth. So there was a lot of instruction on yes and and right. you know, sort of the metaphorical yes and in right. business, um, not shutting people down. So and You never uh, know when you might want to pull out an imaginary taco and just run with it. Yeah, there we go, which we – yeah, we often do. Yeah. No, we don't. Um, the uh, – yeah, so – but in practice it was, you know, we these – like kind of typical improv games, which we just basically sucked at because I think it's the classic. It's like the the office uh, bit where Steve right. Carell tries to do improv and everyone just thinks it's like it's going for the biggest punchline that that's what it's all about, which was completely the opposite of what they were trying to teach us right. improv is right. about. So we did that that game where you stand in a circle and everyone just adds a word to the to the story. Right. And, um, you know, it'd be like. Once upon a time, there was underpants, you know. Like, oh, it's like Mad Libs when you're four. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. And, it, um, and uh, seriously, you know, and we have this uh, improv instructor who's in this, uh, you know, somewhat notable women's comedy troupe. I'll, I'll protect the innocent and not, not say who it was. But she's like, you know, she's really trying to be patient with it. She's like, okay, well, we don't, you know, it doesn't need to be like a crazy word. You can oh, just, God. you can just say the next thing that would, that would follow in the sentence. And then just the and story like, will. Okay. We'll kind of take shape. Starts. <laughs> exactly. And then we go, once upon a time zombie. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, so, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that uh, in practice uh, a whole lot was gained other than learning that MBAs probably shouldn't be cast in well, improv. Well, not everybody. You know, there, I think there's a misconception about improv, too. There are different kinds of improv. There's the people who do the, the whose line is in any way, people who do the games, like Ryan Stiles is mm-hmm. unbelievable unbelievable at it. But then there's a different kind of improv, which is improving in character. And that I can do. But the games, I mean, it was known in the state. We were terrible at improv. We tried the games a couple of times. It was horrible. But when, and then when it came to doing Reno 911, we just simply didn't have time to write the script because we, we were in the middle of this situation with Fox and they had turned down another script we had written and we ended up having to improv this at the last second. But we realized in character we could improv, but but not absolutely not the game. This they're hard. It's too hard. <laughs> um, do you have a preference working off of a script or doing improv? Oh, that's I've never thought about that. Um, I feel like it's sort of like women who can wear short hair. If you can, if you have a face for short hair, you should wear short hair because other people can't do it. Mm. Um, I feel like if you can do improv, it's more fun because a lot of people can't do it. Uh, so in that regard, in a competitive regard, it's fun. Um, but it depends. If it's great writing, th- why – I always love when you go to an audition and you know there's these precious words on a page and the showrunner who's created it is sitting right there and the, and the casting director says, let's just have fun with it. Oh, God. Which is, so, uh, we, so in other words, you want me to paraphrase – the, the words of the, the scribe that's sitting here and <laughs> assuming that I think this would have been a better line than what you've written. Um, if it's well written, go for the script. If, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at learning, pretty quick at learning lines. So. See, and auditions I go on and it, they're not precious words and there's not a scribe. It's, you know, various hosting things. But they will say, you know, you don't have to do the words exactly. Have fun with it. Have fun Make with it, it your own. You're like, we want to see someone who fun. brings someone brings something to it. And there, there, there's a handful of times that I've actually done that, that mm-hmm. I've really brought my own jokes and really made it my own and put my own stamp on it. Because, you know, I'm not like everyone else. I'm coming in there with my own set of skills. and I'm just going to just be me right. or do me, as they say on Jersey Shore and elsewhere. Um, but that's a lot of extra work. And my hunch is always that it goes to the person who pretty much did it straight. I think you're probably right. I hate that. I think you're probably right. I've had a couple of those auditions where um, my my very first audition was for a commercial. And, uh, you know, if you've ever auditioned for a commercial, there are – they they're titled. And the title may have very little to do with the commercial actually, but it's really about. And the title of this particular commercial was – it was for AT&T or one of the – it was for one of the, the – um, 
phone companies. This was decades ago. And the title was Mime. <laughs> and the idea behind it was that this actor is listening to the voiceover and reacting. And the voiceover was like, you know, are you tired of spending too much on your your home phone bill? Have you ever thought to yourself, maybe if I could, you know, find a better – so I saw mime on there. Now, I'm in acting college and I take a mime class. I'm fucking got a B in mime class. I'm going to nail this because I bet these guys you never will believe that box is there. <laughs> mime class. You're going to be at least above average. So I was sweating. Literally sweating. At the end, I was doing like the Godspell breathing. Like I was pulling a rope. I was climbing ladders. I had birds landing on my fingers. I was lighting flames. And I stopped and I looked up and I was going. And the look on their faces was priceless. Now, my girlfriend at the time uh, in college, her she worked there. And that's how I got into this audition. And she called me later and she's like, oh, honey. Um they didn't mean literally like in a white unitard like Marcel with, Marcel. Like Marcel. They meant just – so I later got to see the commercial and it, the person that was cast was simply very, very subtly reacting with their face. Maybe an eyebrow up? Hmm. That sounds like something. <laughs> oh. I was mortified and she said to this day that – tape gets passed around <laughs> at lunchtime it's like a, a it's gone viral that's amazing so i've got to get a hold of it i think we should do some just me or everyone sometimes i ponder on something i have thought or done is it just me or everyone Okay, this is where we figure out if the people who send send us they're just me or everyone's are freaks or if they're common. Okay, I hate I H eight says when I burp I say either biatch or barack and there's a lot of a's in there for the duration. The barack is followed by a quiet Obama in normal <laughs> voice. I love, I love that. that. I, I love that. I don't do that, but I wish I did. Anyone else? I might be able to work up a burp and actually. Yeah. Well. Oh, that was good. Barack. Obama. Was that a real one? Yeah. That was wow. Good. Sorry. Mine Can was you a no, little juicier. Don't apologize. Be That's proud. That's a skill. Yeah. Put now, that on your Barack. resume next. To, wow. Did you make yourself burp, or oh. did you have one on deck? The second one I made myself, but I've been eating, so it's easy. Right okay. Now. Have you ever? Made yourself burp and thrown up by accident. Yes. Okay. Let's not do that. Really? <laughs> yes. Let's do that another time. Absolutely. That's like the verbal shirt. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Great actually. band, by the way. Right. As opposed Great to a tushy band. burp, that's a mouth fart. That's yuck. It's a verbal shirt. I like the first. <laughs> yeah. One. Uh, yeah. You right. You know what? I gu- you, I was guilty of the lily. lily. I should have stopped. Yeah. yeah. Well, you it know, happens. Dustin and I had a burping contest. This I've told this story before, so I'm not going to stretch it out. Which but it I all, won. I won. Oh wow! wow. Excuse oh, me. <laughs> That's wow. nice, Gary. <laughs> Sorry. That was I was just lazing Thank God about. Gary wasn't there on the couch drinking root beer and burping, and then I thought, what soda? I don't creates? even need a soda stream. This what is so up? weird to me, and your boyfriend doesn't not want to make babies with you. I haven't shown him <laughs> the burps yet. Okay. The farts. Yes. I would save those. First. For a romantic moment? For the kid's first birthday, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I can make myself burp. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, maybe you should save the burp for so like for, for when you want to break it to him. You should say, I want a baby, but on the A oh, and yeah. baby, oh, have, yeah. have a giant burp okay. built up. <laughs> Let me see if I can do it. I want a... Oh, darn. Sometimes you get I stuck know. on the in burp. Well, you... Okay. <laughs> You've got time to practice, don't worry. This You've got till no, you're 40. You've have, got till no, you're 42 my, to my get stuff's it right. drying up. I'm out of practice. <laughs> Dustin, talk into the microphone while I make myself burp. Okay. I'm, <laughs> this is where we really should have a camera because <laughs> oh, Allison is very, up in her is, hands. is very. <laughs> I would kill for video right now. I know. Is, no is idea. very physically working up a burp. Like there's chest heaves <laughs> going on right now. <laughs> Oh, damn it. 
Sorry, we all get performance anxiety. It's yeah. not a big deal. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> I can do better. Maybe. <laughs> These See, are this so is charming. embarrassingly bad. These are barely burps. They're just like... They're you're hardly insane. letting anything out, though. I feel like you've got all this air. Like, in the middle of oh, the podcast, you're just going <laughs> to... <laughs> you just throw in the word really quickly. Yeah, you've got to hold it till after the consonant is the key to it. Okay. <laughs> can you, I can do better. Can you fart out that the video. word, baby? <laughs> I can say it while I fart. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, hang on. <laughs> you guys don't make that sound. Yeah, that I do. Water bong sound. I do. You? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am really great. worried for a vomit at this point because it's like you're. <laughs> you know what's going to happen? You're, 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 you're gonna going to get home and you're going to be alone <laughs> and you're going to do it amazing and you're going to start laughing and your boyfriend's going to look at you like, what? Are you, what's so funny? He's going to have to accept that. Yeah. <laughs> it's diminishing returns. Just one more time and then we're going to move on. Whoa. Oh, that, that was, was very close. That was very was close. Was that you? Yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah. I threw my burp. Okay. I have to say that to my son all the time. Don't throw your burps. <laughs> Make them count. Poke an eye out. Make them count. Anyway, we were drinking a lot of soda mm -hmm. for the um, to see what soda creates the best burps for the bourbon contest. And I oh. burped last and longest. Dustin thinks he won, but I'm pretty sure I did. But then there was some talk about how, well, it's my show, so I I had um, you know people wanted to say that I won because they were just being nice to me or something. That's some like. good old fashioned cheap fun. That's like riding the escalators at the mall. Eh. I'm all about the oh, cheap when I, was a, burp when I was a kid, we used to uh, go to one of the tallest buildings in Greenville, South Carolina, which was like nine stories tall, and uh, and go to the top and then ride the escalator back down, but jump before it went down, so it oh, felt like whoa. you were floating for a couple of seconds. That is cheap fun. I would do that right now, actually. I think that probably doesn't get old. You want to try crack? Um, sounds more expensive than elevators. It's cheap. It's pretty okay. cheap. We were just talking about um, right on the earlier podcast someone who stole 300 pounds of frozen meat to uh, feed their crack habit. So that, that sounds like too much here? work for me. Yeah, that's a good guess. No, 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 oh. no. He worked at a homeless shelter. <laughs> oh, okay, and it was on his watch that this happened. Okay, now it just got sad. He was just an <laughs> enabler. Okay. Yeah. Have you guys ever tried crack? No, I never have either, Dustin. No, Gary. I, I had a friend who uh, was really excited to try it and. I can tell you someone who will probably surprise you tried crack. Please. Adam Carolla. He has? That's what I said. It doesn't su it does and it doesn't. When it did this happen? Me. It it comes out it Does Mr. Trump know this? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Trump thinks I'm the only one who's smoking crack because apparently I filmed Magic Johnson's ear, but that's a whole other thing. I saw that. Um, you didn't, though. No. He turned we didn't, around. But they made me a human cliffhanger for, on Mother's I Day know. of all fucking days. It was Mother's exciting. Day. Come on. I just felt bad for my mom. Um, but yeah. Adam, it comes out in the new book. Yeah. Huh. It's just like in passing. Like it's not even – it's like – It's a good thing you're not re letting anything out that's in the book so that people yeah, can yeah. experience it. You know, it's on Amazon. Uh, click through Allison Rosen's new best friend, June 12th. and uh, AllisonRosen.com, and yeah. Pre-order that bitch. And uh, yeah, but it's like it's in passing in a story. It's like, yeah, I came home from work at 6 in the morning and my roommates were standing there smoking crack. So we smoked a little crack. And then he moves on to like something completely different. It's, it's very weird. Wow. Huh. See, I would never do it – me either. Be no, there's a because. Because I'm afraid I would like it too much and I thought keep that doing I had it. that thought. I had that thought. It's and it's, a, and it's not sexy. Right. Yeah, that's it's not my, a sexy drug. That's my logic on that and heroin. It's too. Yeah, one heroin. thing when it's coke and it's like, I'm a coke addict. Mm -hmm. There's something yeah, sort of Studio 54. Yeah, something cool about it. Yeah, but cra it's just never cool. Right. Do you guys watch Girls? I just started last oh. night. Oh, yeah. You were just telling me you don't have time to watch good shows. Last night? Holy God, David! Wait, um, what's his name? Judd Apatow? No, no, no. I, I, I uh, that's on the tip of my tongue. He he was the guest. He he played. Um, if you tried to burp it, would that help? He played, <laughs> no. Chris he, O'Dowd? No, he played uh, her, Leah Dunham's boyfriend. Oh, Adam Driver, I think. Yes. What a fucking powerhouse! Yes. Holy God. I am. That's a. He's amazing. I am relating. Wait, so 
Dustin, you don't watch it, and Gary, you don't watch it. We're going to have to poll all the listeners. I've, no, I, I don't watch it yet, but I've got them all kind of Well, cute. for the people that listen, Somebody's I am relating great. way too much to that show. Like, uncomfortably so. That's not I good. had my own version of that Adam guy. Yeah. So, Well, anyway. I think we all, I think, yeah. That's the point. We yeah. all did. Yeah. Probably not Dustin. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Wiss Mellis says, check inside of shower curtain door for spiders before turning on water. I must say, a, a preponderance of mm. the JMOs have to do with spiders. And uh, I don't do that, but I should because oftentimes I'll be in the shower and there'll be a spider that'll crawl up the wall and I'll think, now what do I do? <clears throat> and I try to just drown it. Yeah, that happened to me the other day. And I was going to, uh, like, try and liberate it because it was kind of like spidering around um, <laughs> in, in the water, um, the, the standing water that inevitably so builds in my, in my shower because it doesn't drain well. Um, and then it somehow, like, swam its way down to – it, like, it committed shower suicide. Ugh. I was going to help it, it out. Drown itself. How yeah, did he it know? He didn't out. know that, though. I know. You were just a, I, yeah, he we, didn't even know we, in a web. We, we weren't communicating well. I have but. a friend who's – who her mother is one of my favorite people on the planet, and she used to do th- say things to me when I had, you know, my own show. She'd go, you should forget doing this show like this. Nobody watch. You should do a Coke commercial, she would always <laughs> say to me. And I would say, great, I'll just call them. And make that happen. Um, but her, my friends had her daughter at her mother's house. So I'm telling this terribly. Um, no, but she had I'm a, going the baby, on this ride. The baby, uh, she was changing her, her baby's diaper on her mother's bed. And she called out, Mom, get a napkin. There's a spider in here. I've got to kill the spider. And her mom said, why you want to kill the spider? Is it, why are you... Just leave it alone. She said, Mom, it's right near the baby. Get a, get a napkin. I want to kill it. And she goes, she goes, I don't see what are the big deal. And she said, Mom, it could be poisonous. And her mom said, which is one of my favorite quotes of all time now, not these days. <laughs> <laughs> Spiders have changed. <laughs> that's good. So that's sort of an inside joke with my husband. And I. <laughs> I like that. Um, that actually reminds me, a segment within a segment, I, I don't know what this, oh, Gary's ready to play some music. There's no music yet. It's brand new and it's completely self-aggrandizing. It could just be called, um, hey, stroke my ego. But on the Adam Carolla show, which is the other show that I do, um, oftentimes I'll make little comments or say little jokes or whatever that aren't really heard by the people in the room, um, which is fine, but people will, will tweet at me that they heard it and like that's a big thing kind of telling me about little comments i made that were so fast that no one really you know no one uh paid them the proper respect in the room (laughs) let's say but that they think are super funny so now and this is kind of uh, obnoxious sometimes when i say things i'll think this is one they're gonna they're gonna pick up on (laughs) but so that's why I have to tell you guys about one that zero, a big fat goose oh, egg of people heard. can I just warn you? You're going to retell a joke that didn't play the first time. Is that what's happening? And yeah, you know why? hope it gets its proper respect. Okay, okay. <laughs> you want no, to know I'm why? here for you. Because I'm sure that it's... <laughs> I'm here for you. Here's the delusion. Okay. I'm sure okay. that it's so genius. Okay, it's I'm just, ready. It's truly that no one heard Total it. Total open mind. They didn't, they couldn't have heard I'm it. Pretend there was like... No, you, it was so I'm quiet. I'm hearing this. Well, if that's it doesn't, right. If it doesn't work this time, you could, maybe you could explain it after. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. You could write a book uh, about absolutely it. Absolutely, I will. Thank you. Okay, so Adam was talking about um, how he realized a great way, new, exciting way to kill spiders is with some kind of um, flammable material and like a torch or something. So he was just creating fireballs in the air and burning these spiders. And he was saying that there was a spider in the corner of his, I don't know, rec- some room where he works at or something. Rumpus and like. Room. Sometimes he has been saying rumpus room a lot. Did you say just rectum. pull that out of? Mm. <laughs> did you just pull rumpus room out of nowhere? It's sort of a go-to for like the funniest name for a room. Mm-hmm. Oh. See, if only I'd known. Anyway, Men- add it to the story. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, in the rumpus room, um, <laughs> I just clumsily tossed that in. So he said that you know sometimes you have a spider that's like just lazy, but then sometimes you have a spider that's like you know really active. And I and I said you had a real Charlotte on your hands. Okay. Very funny. <laughs> it's not that funny, obviously. I suppose you now should... I'm realizing. But it's just that I thought perhaps it was just a, you know, a reference to a much beloved and ballyhooed 
Sure, it's a piece clever of liter- literature. Liter- yeah. literary reference. Zero, zero people wrote me to let me know they heard that. Because they didn't hear it, that's what I think. Because if they did, they I think you're going to get a lot of letters now, Allison. I don't, are they going to be positive? <laughs> I just think you're going to get I, a lot of letters. I think they'll be well articulated on what people thought about that. Okay. Let's see. Let's see here. Um, oh, okay. Big DK says, having to carry all the groceries in one trip despite physical pain and possible bag explosions along the way. Yes, I do that. I am always yes. dropping something or spilling yes. something. Yes. What, why do we do this oh, to ourselves? Oh, and can I take it one step yeah, further? Yeah. I do it constantly. I did it yesterday, as a matter of fact. There were too many cups in the bedroom. My son, he'll take a sip of something and then have to go get another milk and another juice, and then I've got 50 cups in my bedroom. And I car- tried to carry them all out instead of dumping some of them, and I spilled all of them. But then what I do consistently is then speak to myself out loud. <laughs> every time. And, I, and that's one of the very few times that I do it, but I do it every time. I, I, I say like a, damn it, Carrie. It's sad. Who, whose voice is that you're speaking to yourself in? <laughs> this is my grandmother. She used to always feel spill the pain. cups. Feel the pain. It's not true. She was always trying to keep me from spilling the cups. Um, no. I go, damn it, Carrie. And I do that in the car, too. I, go, I'm, I say I'm sorry out loud in the car a lot. If I do something dumb and I turn and I didn't see somebody, I go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think I talk to myself out loud. I talk to myself in my head constantly. You don't, I don't have an out think, loud? No, unless something shocks me or frightens me, or then I might do like, oh, whoa, or something like that. But not not actual conversation with myself out loud. I broke my foot last year. I slipped. I, we were getting out of the jacuzzi. The dog took my son's new bathing suit, and I jumped out really fast, and I slipped, and I broke my foot. And when I landed, I surprised myself by blurting out, Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. It's so oh, quaint. Oh my word. <laughs> Dustin, do you speak out loud to yourself? I don't. But I was gonna say on the uh, on the grocery thing, um I uh I don't think I do that so much. And the reason is that um when I lived in New York and didn't have a car, uh there was no real option to right breaking up the grocery trips right and seven I had, floor walk up you put them under your arm yeah, yeah. and and my nearest uh grocery store in queens where i lived most of the time in new york was like you know seven blocks away not super far but far enough that mm-hmm. if you bought say a week's worth of groceries that was that was too much to buy and i frequently calibrated poorly as far as how much i should buy given mm-hmm. that my only option was to carry it physically yeah, there's a sale on cases of soda absolutely mm-hmm. and you got you need that you know 10 for 10 for 9 you might have a burping contest later <laughs> absolutely. for example yeah one should always be prepared hmm. for that you never know and so i would seriously have so many that i would have to like stop every two blocks and oh, just yeah. and just like squat yes. down yeah. and just and like and your finger the, the white across your fingers yes yeah. from the yeah. bags it was, cutting off yeah. Yeah. yeah and i would think of those like strongman contests they run mm-hmm. on ESPN where they have to you know lug like you know uh uh Something slot heavy. machines on their back and stuff like that yeah but yeah, they weren't carrying soda right exactly but it was like but they were actually like in a competition where they could win like hundreds of thousands of dollars for doing it well i was just walking down the street for, you know, <laughs> in, like in queens the... for no reason <laughs> and so now i feel like i so appreciate that i can break groceries up into yeah. i feel like honestly i'm not taking that opportunity as much as I should. Like, I feel like I should I now go from my car to my apartment like one bag at a time or just like one can of soup at a time. I, just to I, be do, like, I carry one I can egg do at this a time. all day now. You know, look at me. Every time I think I think I, I for some reason need to get it all done quicker. So I do one trip and I always end up doing something that makes the whole rest of the day fucked up. I spill. So I, I might have to go change. Yeah, see, it you're wearing an entirely white outfit, which is very attractive. But my first thought when I saw that was, I could never do that because I spill on myself way too frequently. I'm wearing a, a white bikini, if you can't see. That's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. A thong. So therefore, if you spill hot coffee, there's a lot of flesh that could be can, seared. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it's very bold of me to wear white, too, with my son, but he's not here today. Okay. Um. So in New York, though, same grocery situation. And I thought I would I, – I, I, Dustin and I both used to live in New York. Um, and I thought – what? 
That's where I'm from as well. Yes, we all we all dealt with that horrendous mm-hmm. grocery awfulness, um, which actually wasn't that bad. So I thought I would just love being back out here and having a car and the convenience and everything. And I'm not loving the car aspect of it all. Mm-mm. No, I wish I th- there was a grocery store to walk to. Mm-hmm. Yes. I know. Here. I know. I live very far from everything. You're in Malibu, right? We're in Malibu, and it's. I might as well live in Manhattan and drive everywhere. <laughs> Because it's very far. But I still find myself driving over the hill to go to Trader Joe's because I love it. But um, I do the same thing. I, I pile up a bunch of crap and I really don't have to do that. I, I did call my – I remember I called my mom when I first moved here and I said, you're never going to believe what I'm doing. And I think she was expecting something way more exciting. I said, <laughs> I'm driving my car to my house that has and there are groceries in the back. <laughs> it was such a big deal and I try to remind myself of that every time I'm driving 100 miles to get to the grocery store and how lucky I am to be able to do that. <laughs> Whatever. When did you move out here? 98. And how was your adjustment? Uh at first I loved it. At first I I was I was still enamored by the palm trees. Mm-hmm. Tom Lennon and I would would every day go look for some palm tree. It was a big deal. And the grocery driving and the barbecues and all that stuff. But I am a diehard New Yorker and I miss it like a limb. And uh, I'm that annoying person. When we're sitting on the beach in Malibu on a Sunday and people say, isn't this just perfect? And I'm like, I get it. Yeah, it's great. But for me, I like New York. Yeah. I'm becoming more and more that way. When I Mm -hmm. first got here for a while, I was like, well, you know, there's there's great things about both, and there are great things about both. But I'm I miss New York more and mm-hmm. more. But I probably won't ever go back, or I won't go back for a really long I time. I miss New York more since I've had my son, because now I'm looking at the world. Every day is an opportunity for teaching, and I'm finding it hard here uh, to give him the sorts of things that were just immediately around. I mean, I was there. I try to go as often as I can, but I was there last week and. I was standing outside my hotel and I just thought, if he were here right now, what would he be experiencing? I smelled something I'd never smelled before, a great you know, food. I heard nine languages in three minutes that I was standing there. Um, you know, the, the clothes that you would never see because everyone wears the same thing mm-hmm. in Malibu. Um, to all those kinds of things that you don't have to buy or go looking for are just there for you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's that kind of nonsense. But, you know, I mean, the kid, you know, we live at the beach. It's wonderful and air and running and all of that is great. But I do love, you know, wish you could have it all. Wish you could have it all. But Yeah, I miss uh, that okay. amount of stimulation. Yeah, the stimulation. That's what it is. I, I, I do better with lots of input. Um, and my husband is a way more easygoing guy. He loves the silence, and silence for me is terror. I can't tell you how uplifting that was for you to say that you wished you could have raised, your, like that you could be raising your son in New York, because it drove me crazy when I lived in New York. I mean, not that I've been a parent or sort of know what would what one thing is better than the other, but it seems to me that like that experience is a great thing mm-hmm. for a child, and that mm-hmm. exposing them to as many. I mean, I feel like. If I am a parent, I would also want to do that, expose a child to as many varied Mm -hmm. experiences as possible, and that New York is the best possible place for that. And for everyone, including people like native New Yorkers who love New York and love living in New York, are like, well, but, you know, but when we have the kid, you know, then we got to start, you know, thinking we're looking at maybe moving to Pittsburgh. Yeah, everyone leaves when they have kids. But it's just like this given, it's this accepted uh, wisdom for mm -hmm. some reason, like that that, it just has to be done. And it's so weird to me. Don't get me wrong. There are, uh, you know, the grass is certainly always greener, but the, but there are the the immense amount of dangers and sure. dirty and you know that kind of stuff too. But but um, yeah, I'm just I'm just living in that grass is always greener thing. We're going there in, in two weeks together, and I'm sure in five minutes I'll be over it. <laughs> After well, it's he hot eats, right now, it's a pretzel out of the garbage can. <laughs> Um, That'll I, be an experience. Mm-hmm. That's right. We will never <laughs> forget that. Um, I think it's topic sombrero time. It's the Topic, Topic Sombrero. We asked for topics and you sent them in. It's the Topic, Topic Sombrero. Now pick the topic and let's begin. It's the Topic 
sombrero. All right. Can a couple that breaks up get back together and make it last the second time around? Now, my first reaction to this is uh, probably not because I pretty much think that if you broke up, there's a reason you broke up. And I watch people try to make relationships that can't work work for like repeatedly. And I just think it brings so much heartache and heartbreak. And why do that to yourself? However, I do think there are a lot of exceptions to that. And and when I think about it, a lot of couples that I know who have pretty solid relationships did break up at some point. So therefore, I just gave zero answer. (laughs) I have experience in this, not myself, but with a very close friend. And I would have thought it would not be possible myself. But these people have uh, proven to me that is not the case. They broke up. They're back together. They now are madly in love more than they were before. They have a more stable relationship. They have a child. And I think now more than ever, they know they're in it for the long haul. Uh, Why did they break up the first time? I think they were younger and they both had careers that took them in different directions. And now they realized being apart, they realized they wanted to make that those sacrifices and that commitment and that it meant that much to them. I think breaking up was necessary for them. How long were they apart? I feel like a year. Year. Those um, – I don't know if you guys ever read Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus books, no. which are super cheesy and you will hate yourself as you read it. But I will just say that there's uh, – he said – Ugh, I can't believe I'm can't believe I'm quoting this or talking about it. I should have just said that I heard this somewhere, mm-hmm. as opposed to admitting this is where that came. But um, well, you see, men are like rubber bands. Right. You have to give them room to stretch, to fully, you know, extend, and then they come snapping back to you. Um, but he says that you shouldn't hold it against a guy if he needs to be apart from you. And by that, I mean like broken up from or if he doesn't realize that he loved you until you guys are broken up Hmm. because that sometimes that's what men need. And um, I don't know if I could could uh, feel I'm trying to think if I wouldn't hold that against him. I think my attitude would be uh, you had to to lose me to realize what you had. I think the absolute defining factor is why you broke up. Yeah. I mean, if the if it's because that person was cheating on you or sleeping with your mom, I mean, it's hard to come back around to that. But if it's that, you know, you didn't have enough time to spend together and you were whatever, I think it certainly depends on the reason. Yeah. Or or like you're saying, if you're both really young yeah. and yeah. you just haven't really dated other people. Yeah. I think, I think the timing is super important. Actually, for a, a dating article I wrote way back in the day, I interviewed this researcher who had found that um, – uh, people who can consider themselves first loves or people talking about other people that they consider their first loves that they had lost touch with frequently uh, had a desire to to reconnect with those people because often the reason that they had drifted apart wasn't to do with the sort of underlying relationship but it was more like circumstances in life and stuff like that and and in that case she found that that those who had found their way back together actually had incredibly strong relationships and we're like incredibly happy but i don't i think that it's less likely that that's going to work out and be successful if it's like you start dating someone in your 30s and then you like you wait for him to snap back like a rubber band or whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever the theory is especially if he's sleeping with your mom <clears throat> yeah but, yeah yeah avoid people who are sleeping with your mom yeah that's sort of or just good... be wary of them yeah. yeah 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 exactly you can't judge but no um have you ever broken up with someone and then gotten back together with them and that worked no. Personally, no. Me neither. I have broken up with someone and gotten back together and it didn't work. Yes. That's, that's the been only my experience, experience yeah, as well. Likewise. Yeah. In fact, I was like a real uh, zealot on this matter where I would always tell friends, you cannot get back <laughs> together with people that you broke up with. And, uh, you know, it was just like a thing that I was known for. And You're that, fun. You're a fun friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then burping <laughs> contests and yelling at them. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I finally... Um, Gave it a shot with someone that I had broken up with, and all of my friends were, of course, mm. all over me, saying that you know how can you've betrayed your you know yourself, and it was just uh, I guess uh, karmic justice that it was like a horrible well, like I don't think we even lasted three weeks on the on the like second time around. It was uh, it was a train wreck. 
Yeah, you're an advocate for clean breaks, yes? I am an advocate for clean breaks. And mentally, I am, but I think in practice, I'm more of a messy break kind of person. I'm friends with most of my exes. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, because we had a real connection at one point. If it, and if it was a real connection, and you're just trying to figure out what that connection is and what do we mean to each other, and then you realize, oh, wait, we weren't meant to be this kind of relationship. We were meant to be this kind of relationship. But uh, I would say most. Mm -hmm. I'm friends with most of the guys that I had somewhat casual relationships with or that I I dated. But in terms of the serious relationships um, that I had, I'm not friends with with the, the two guys that I was in relationships with in New York. But they're both married, and I think that's part of it. Like, I don't want to... I'm still close friends. With, in fact, my boyfriend in college, my first love, really... I'd like to make clear they my, weren't married at the time. My, <laughs> my first big girl girlfriend uh, was... Uh, I was the girlfriend was Craig Wedren, who's a oh, musician. Yeah. And now... Didn't he do the States music? He did. And Craig has since married... For, for many years they've been married, Tom Lennon's sister. Oh, wow. So it just felt like, you know, we're dancing around each other going, oh, I love you so much, but what is this? What are we to each other? And that wasn't it. But the but the but just adoring the person in general, and now we're still very much in each other's lives and adore each other's husbands and wives and kids and all that great stuff. Mm-hmm. So, still a family, but in a different way. When you met your husband, how did you, how did, how did you know he was like the one? I didn't. I, in fact, I had a very specific type that I would go for. They didn't necessarily look a certain way, but they were a sort of generally in the in the rock music world and uh, usually a performer. And my girlfriend uh, from New York, who was actually the drummer in my band, would say to me, okay, after this breakup, let's just take some time. You need to take some time by yourself. You're a serial dater. So I had broken up with somebody and she came out to L.A., from New York to visit me and and uh, I said you know what I just got this show I have to do the table read you hang out with this guy who I know he's a nice guy he's the DP on the show um, you know I'll be back in an hour I came back from that table read and she said you need to date him and I was like what you're telling me to date somebody and <laughs> him he's really and I just didn't see it it wasn't an aversion to it it just was not the not normally who I would and I at that exact moment, everything just sort of went, you know, like, you know, wavy in front of me. And I went, wait a minute. Wow. And I saw him in a completely different light and immediately just fell in love with him. Wow. And that was how it happened. If she hadn't said that, I'm sure you've thought of this before. What do you think would have happened? I really don't know. I've actually never thought of that. Oh. I really don't know. I really don't know. Because but I'm a romantic, I like to think you guys still would have ended up together. Well, I, you know, would have been sad if we hadn't. He's, you know, I mean, I think it takes, you know, your friends to sometimes point you in right directions. If you're going to listen or not, that's another thing. And normally I wouldn't listen. But this time I listened and, and I listened because she was right. You know, if he had been a, a creepy doggy face, I probably would have listened. <laughs> but he's a handsome dude. Well, Dustin and I have talked about this when I was telling him um, at the kind of the beginning ish of the the relationship that I'm in now, I was saying that it from the very beginning, it felt different than anything else that I had been involved in. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure whether I wanted I didn't even think I wanted to be in a relationship. I was just done Mm -hmm. for a while. Um, because all the relationships I've been in in the past just hadn't gone well. Mm -hmm. And I dated the wrong guy repeatedly. And then I'd done that thing where I'm like, I'm not attracted to this guy, but it seems like the right guy. So I'm going to make myself date him. And then, and then when that didn't work, I thought, I don't, I can't, I can't figure this out anymore. And I've read too many stupid dating books. I'm very much in my head and my life is fine without a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. It's better than like, it's, it's, it's frighteningly fine Mm -hmm. that I don't, feel like I need this and I'm sure one day I'll want this but and also by the way the more you don't have sex the less you like I would think <laughs> sex is something I used to engage in and it's been a long time and um, I'm totally okay with that I was weirdly okay with all of it but then I became friends with this guy and I was drawn to him but I really wasn't sure if I wanted uh, anything more than friendship but so I was telling Dustin all this and you know at this point we were already going out the, uh, the guy and I are already going out she and her not the two of us right important clarification <laughs> and um 
And then Dustin was pointing out that, well, that kind of makes sense that if everything in the past, if you had a pattern in the past and that never panned out, so to speak, then the the right thing would feel different from mm-hmm. the beginning. Mm-hmm. Ours felt different from the beginning. Absolutely. I, I did the same thing. My relationship before my husband was so dramatic. It was beyond ridiculous. And that I, too, was done, 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 done. I mean, it, uh, oh, yeah. that's for another podcast. <laughs> Uh, was that for Mark Maron's podcast? Yeah, seriously, because you've already used that good material. <laughs> He's got that copyrighted. Ugh. Um, Ugh. But this relationship yeah, felt totally different. Felt like like this. Uh, this looks like what I see other people having. I didn't think that I could have one of these. I didn't think I would want one of those. I knew I wanted one of those. I didn't think I was capable of of calming down enough to be in one. I think I I wanted it. The idea of not being nervous all the time and of having someone who I could <clears throat> trust and who I knew would be there and who, when I left, I wasn't instantly like, when am I going to see me again? What's going mm-hmm. on? Does he still like blah, 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 all that noise in my head? I, that appealed to me, but I didn't think I could feel it, attracted to someone who didn't right. bring that level right. of, of, of turmoil. turmoil. Yeah. Sure, sure. Is that sexy? I think at a certain point when you've hit, when you've run against the wall enough times, yeah. it is. It is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know because sometimes I mean, now that just... I have a son, I can't imagine. Sometimes I, you know, think about, you know, what life would be like with someone, anyone other than my husband with this child, and you know, my God, it's like going through a war together. You know, you have to really be able to count on somebody. Yeah. Dustin, how's your love life? <laughs> as as empty as it's always been. <laughs> Good. Let's keep it status quo. Yeah. Gary, do you want to chime in? I forget what the original subject was. Oh, it was uh, it was breaking up, getting back together. The spiders, I think. Yeah. Spiders. It was uh, burping. <laughs> uh, well, I do. I am scared of spiders, for sure. So I don't like that they keep coming up on the JMOs. You're avoiding the topic, Gary. I am avoiding yes. the topic. I'm, I'm, What's her I name? I want to tell my spider story that I was too embarrassed to tell on stage at UCB. Okay. Oh, I it, I wasn't embarrassed. I was I was kind of shell shocked at UCB. I didn't talk a lot at that show, but you we guys, just did a live show at Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, which went very well. And Gary excellent. thought he was going to be in the back um, doing the tech stuff from back there, but instead he they was on stage. stage. Yeah, which I thought was very cool, even though um, I kind of forgot he was there often because he was behind <laughs> me. It was the first time. It we was were fine. All, it was yeah, just, I don't know. People talk about the lights shocking you, and it did. Well, we're used to, you know, with the Adam Kroll show, we do live podcasts all the time, but they're in these theaters where you can see everyone. Like, oh, right. you're enjoying chicken. And, <laughs> oh, now they're bringing the checks for everyone, and they're kind of dropping them on the table. And I just Wildly. heard that guy order, and um, you're looking at your phone. Like, you can see everything. Right. Whereas this was, you know, like a real a, a comedy club. Yeah, a theater where the lights are in your eyes, and you can't really see the audience that much. Yeah, so that was a little jarring. And did you have, usually when we perform there, we have people on stage sit sitting did yeah, you have that that's we, always nerve-wracking a little yeah and they someone's were, sitting indian style and you're afraid you're going to trip over them well there was like i would i was on stage too so directly behind me were those seats you're talking about mm-hmm. and those were like half full and then directly in front of me were the other side of the stage seats and there was only one person sitting there and i knew who it was and i was just staring right in their eye line the whole time and that was equally as jarring as the 12 people behind me. but I always feel like it's a lot of pressure for those people who are sitting on the stage. Yeah. Yes. One I'd of, like to point out that it was packed, though. It was. Despite no, the fact that it, it makes it sound like the wings were Yes, were there's, only, as... there's only about 14 seats or so on each wing, and one of them had 12 people or so in it, and those were two of the only empty seats in the house, and the other section was the only one they didn't use. The yeah. rest mm-hmm. of the seats in the whole theater were full. Um, right, so, so anyways, they were talking, you guys were talking about spiders, uh, That's pathetic that I'd point that out during that but show. No, it's, it's good. And, uh, by the way, it's a 13 seat theater. <laughs> That's good. Right. Good. It's incredibly intimate. It's an intimate, intimate. My mom, my brother. That's right. His girlfriend, his <laughs> other girlfriend. And the guy in face paint. Yeah, there was a guy in face paint. So anyway, tell your story. Yeah, so anyways, you guys were talking about spiders, and uh, that day, or the day before or something, very recently, I was doing my laundry, and I finished, and I, I, you know, am ghetto, have a laundry room. So I came back up to my apartment with the thing, and I dumped all my laundry out onto my bed, and it was, like, very close to the edge, and, like, a sock or two fell off, and so did a spider that was the size of about a quarter. Was it clean? Out of my clean laundry. I was 
fucking freaked out for the next. Did you like, scream three like hours. a like a lady? I did not scream, but I picked up oh. the nearest thing that I could to, to <laughs> oh my, hit it. Oh my! Oh dear! Oh dear! <laughs> my word! I inadvertently picked up a shoe that I like used to go hiking or something. So I like slammed it as hard as I could on the floor, and fucking dirt went everywhere. And oh, I just I felt that you get murder. I know, but he was in my fucking clean clothes, yo. That's not oh, okay. Poor guy. Was he want to crawl around in your dirty underwear? <sighs> How did he get in the... He has Ugh. feelings, too. Does that mean he was in the dryer? I know. That's what I'm wondering like, as well. Did no, he seem hot? He was, I think he was hanging I, out in your laundry basket. I didn't basket. ask him. Oh, that makes he wasn't. so much sense. My, my laundry basket is thatched. He wouldn't have been able to... There was no for him to chill. That it's, seems like where they want to be. People don't use the word thatched often they enough don't. anymore. No. For ro- I sometimes for roofs. I couldn't think Wanna of a better word. Want to come over to my house word. and thatch my roof with me? <laughs> you know what I mean. It's got a, like a million holes in it. It's all like cross... Woven? It's thatched. Sure. Thatched. Yeah. What's it made out of? Like plastic. Some, it's I was, not really I was picturing thatched. like banana leaves. That's just, yeah, it that's was just the wrong word. But if it was, if you could, it was woven. Yes. And by the way, I had I stop a banana now. leaf basket. Mm-hmm. It's a Target find. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, this will be an organic splash of, I don't know what for my house. Anyway, for the next couple of days, I'm walking around my house, it smelled. Yeah, I was yep. like, what smells like feet? Yep. So there's the some thing. rotting sock somewhere or something, and then I just yeah, it was I the a, friggin' banana a, leaf basket. I bought flowers at the florist last week. Put them in a vase, walking around the house, going some. There's a rotten Cancer egg somewhere. Important, but I agree. <laughs> we heard that. Um, here's the thing about cancer research: it's important. <laughs> Not apparently more important than what I'm saying. No, about tell us about these flowers. Anyway, they were smelly, and I, I w- that would be the last thing that I would expect would be that smell coming out of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Things that smell like feet need to announce that that's what's going <laughs> Especially on. Especially don't like, disguise yourself as a flower. That's right. When you smell like feet. Ugh, that's how they operate. <sighs> the stinkies. Yeah, it should be like when, it, like when uh, something's poison, it has the Mr. Yuck, like... Uh, yeah. Things that are going to smell like feet should have like a little foot with like lines coming yeah. out of it so that you to know like, you. like right. it will smell like feet someday. Hey, cheap ass. I know you just <laughs> skipped over the hydrangeas to pick me because I'm cheaper. I smell like feet. <laughs> but the organic thing probably costs more. It, you cost more for the privilege of having a foot smelling item. <laughs> That's right. right. I think the sticker could also be someone like a face and then lines showing they're breathing in. Yeah. And then a circle and a slash. Like don't inhale. Yeah, and with a maybe scratch and sniff sticker. Oh, so you know see, what that you're in would for. be good. Did you guys ever have scratch and sniff sticker books that had a gross scent? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, like like yeah. Be, Sesame Street. I remember there was um I don't Slime know where they went. Or yeah, garbage. Yes. probably garbage from and, uh, Oscar the Grouch. Oscar the Grouch and his friend Slimy the Worm, mm-hmm. who you always saw the little sticks pushing Slimy. I love him. I still love him. Is Slimy still, still here? around? He is good. Mm-hmm. Good. Did you know that they use Sesame Street music to torture? You did, okay. To, yeah. yeah, or at Guant- Guantanamo, at Guantanamo. I think, to torture them. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah. seem that torturous. No, I love. I would love it. Yeah, I mean, I guess anything over and over and over again. Well, you have a fairly young child. I mean, well, I was going to say like the music it's like being at Guantanamo with... at my house every day, apparently. <laughs> But isn't I mean I, like I haven't listened to these jingles, but I would think mm-hmm. you know with repeated hearing they sure. might be sort of cloying. We or... do, we listen to a lot of the a lot of the we've got Bieber fever in our house right now, I'm sorry. and my son insists that it's Justin Beaver with <laughs> with with, v, with vengeance. He's furious. He gets furious at me when I call him Justin Bieber. I even tried to Google it for him and show him that it was a B and not a V, and he didn't want no part of it. Well, that was, I, there's I, nothing cuter than a six year old <clears> with a lisp arguing with you that it's beaver That's i hope he's not cute. googling justin beaver though because i feel like that <laughs> no, we might find, turn up we some, found uh, some things yeah. we found some things but we have money for therapy <laughs> it's good you have everything um, Actually, speaking of that I've, i don't know if you're aware of this carrie but when you um search your name on mm-hmm. youtube oh um yeah i don't like where this is the, going. yeah like the the sixth or seventh result is uh carrie kenny silver nude i know you what and, is that? I know. Uh, it's not you. I know. I, I get Google. I viewed the whole thing for funny. research. I have been nude in feature television shows. I've been featured f- nude on t- on just tele. I'm going to be nude on anger management coming up in a couple of weeks. But when I get Google alerts about myself, because yes, I have a Google alert on myself. You have to. And it says Carrie Kenny nude. 
I actually one time made my assistant with his credit card buy the subscription to get in to see if it really was me nude, and it wasn't. And now he has a subscription to I don't know what. So the other, Merry Christmas. Is it someone who who is also named Carrie Kenny Silver? No. Mm-mm. Has nothing it's to do like with me. It's just like a search result thing? That's just so a search weird. Result thing. It's just, yeah, yeah I mean. We uh, did it. They did a porno of Reno, a really good one. I mean, really good. When I say good, it's not just like, you know, good sex. They really went to town with the wardrobe, the hairstyling. And we did a benefit at the UCB for a friend of ours who had cancer, who works for the alternative press and his, um, I mean, Associated Press. And his, uh, they, the, all of the porn people that came because we showed uh, clips of the porno movie and, um, they were serious. They they had written jokes for it. They had the wardrobe. They had a, incredible sets. It was impressive. And they you had, say sets or they sex? Set set. Okay. And they had good good bodies and you know it was it's flattering in a way. Flattering. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to respect the uh, artistic integrity of yeah. You know, it was impressive. Good good effort. Wonderful. Didn't want to shake their hands, Mm-mm. but good for you. Yeah. Pat Although on the back. If I, I don't want to say more about how I would feel if I found out that someone had done a porn parody involving me because that Tom would Lennon encourage for it. a month. Now, that would, would be the greatest me... thing that could I mean that no, that's, will, I, that's that will show that you've arrived. Well, I know yeah, I know you feel wouldn't good like in that it, way. but it would it would mean great things for your career. Can't Tom, negative tweets show you arrived. I'm so for sorry. For a I... month Tom Lennon would screen grab tweet uh, message text message me pictures of his character rear fucking my character. <laughs> And I would just be like at the playground and be like, oh, text from Tom. Holy <laughs> Jesus, God. <laughs> I are don't remember you, that happening. Are you in Burning Love? I am. Okay, so. Mm-hmm. Today, right? Well, I don't know when this happens. Mm-hmm. Burning Love is a parody of The Bachelor. Yes, a yes. brilliant parody of The Bachelor. With Ken Marino. Yes. And anyone else? From Written the- by his wife, Erica Oyama, who's a genius writer. Okay. Uh, yes, everybody's in it. a bunch of it. funny people. Everybody's in it. Ken Jong's in it. Natasha Leggero. Gotta rub my nose um, in it, huh? I'll forget important people. I know I will. But uh, Michael Ian Black, it's really funny. I'm not into the end. One of the last episodes. And pe- that's on... Episodes. Wh- where do people go to find Burninglove.com. it? Burninglove.com. Okay. It's really, Wonderful. really, really funny. Ben Stiller's in the in the pilot episode and his wife. Very funny. I think it might be time for... I just have one, hey, go fuck yourself. What does that mean? Are you going to hit me? No, hey, no. Hey, hey, go fuck yourself. This is a segment where we tell people who need to be told to go fuck themselves oh, to go fuck fun. themselves. It's really cathartic. Wow. It's very... But I don't have... Well, have you gotten backlash from it ever? No, I've only gotten frontlash. People wow, love it. Oh, frontlash. Yeah. Um, see, I do have some notes here about... Well, this you is sort of this. You got a big one out on the first show, so I feel like. Yeah, I did. I, I there was some yelling. Oh, you have more than one. Oh yeah, I keep an, an ongoing thing. It's uh, I, you know, I she have to. She seems so sweet, but there are deep reservoirs right. of hate. Right. I maybe I don't oh. even seem that sweet today. I've been burping a lot. Well, sweet. just sort of a general. Uh, generally, there's this. I forget if I've already done this one, but there's this um, sort of quiet current of the people saying that I don't. Uh, open up about myself. Have I? Have you heard me do this one before? No, I don't know no. why anyone would. Isn't no, their whole that's show fucking ridiculous? About Thank you. Opening up about yourself. Yeah, the oh. oversharing, if you will. So You've this done eighteen hours of. They might be talking about me on the Adam Carolla show. It's like I've been to listening show. to her for a year and a half, and the only thing, yeah, it's like I've been listening to this for her for a year and a half, and she's just like a character of a caricature of a real person. The only thing I really know about her is um, she moved out here from New York. She likes cats. She had some ovaries removed, and blah blah blah. First of all, I'm allergic to cats. Second of all, you can't have some over ovaries removed. Like several. Yeah. You should you should do one entire Adam Carolla show, no matter what the topic is, just talk about va- your vaginal itch. I've done that. And they'll get that. over it really quickly. <laughs> well, then what more could there be to that, share? Yeah. I mean, I haven't really done that, but I, I've, if I have cramps, you'll know. Um, all I'm saying is I feel like people who think that I don't open up about myself and who think that they don't know anything about me, it's because they're not listening, obviously, because I say a ton about me, plus I put a ton about my. Uh, about myself out there and also uh just because i haven't turned myself into a caricature with like a through line narrative that i repeat repeatedly 
which is how you do with repeated things like some comedians <laughs> out there, uh, doesn't mean that there's anything less real about me. I would argue that, that I'm more real because I haven't done that, and I'm just letting it all hang out, all my ovaries. Go fuck yourself. Hey, 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 go, go fuck yourself. I have one more. Uh, uh, bef before okay. you get off that, I feel like you should throw a dinner party, and you should invite those people who say you're not opening up. Uh, like half and half, you should invite them and the ones who say that you talk too much and ruin the podcast. Oh yeah, and That'd you should be just you should me. just alternate seating and then just uh, and have like a thirteen hour dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> we just get a standoff with a right. valet who takes the keys away. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we would lock the door and there'd be thunder. Mm. Someone's going to die tonight. And be the murder mystery. Yeah, and couscous. I used to think that word was canapes. Can, can apes? Yeah. I once ate potpourri at a party because I thought it was uh, terra chips. <laughs> How was it? I, I tried rosy. to eat plastic sushi once thinking that it was mm -hmm. It ta sushi. probably tasted similar. My sister's boyfriend, it, no, husband, excuse me, admitted that he'd eaten dog food one time because mm -hmm. he thought it was oyster crackers. It was dog kibble or I dog that. treats. My stepmother keeps it in the in a thing on the on the kitchen counter that just said snacks <laughs> well how do i know yeah yeah uh, you, and I, I i told i wanted to know how it was because i've been tempted to try that don't it's not worth it yeah mm -mm. okay sticks is it teeth. livery this particular one was chicken kibble <laughs> chicken snacks the bacon ones might be good my experience was uh they're mostly yeah. just dry like why, why did you eat dry. it I was a kid and just... Okay. That's what you do. Gary, have you put anything in your mouth that doesn't belong there? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I don't know. No. All right. I don't like that question. That makes, me, that makes it seem like you have. Mm. I'm sure I have at some point. Has, I, okay. Has anyone here gotten their stomach pumped? I have not. No. no. Dustin? No. All right. How do you eat plastic sushi? And how'd you come I, back I from didn't that? Eat, I didn't eat it. I was uh, at this um, trade show that a, fr a friend of my dad's um, is a seafood wholesaler, and he had gotten me into North America's largest like seafood expo. Because I, because wow. I'm do a you big. Know? Who do you yeah. know? know? Who do I got to blow to get in that? <laughs> right, and exactly, because you know I. Um, uh, enjoy eating seafood and he was saying like all these purveyors bring out their best product because they're trying to make sales and whatever and it's this you know basically gigantic feast which it generally is like you can have caviar and all types of like smoked salmon and sushi and, and like it's all just laid out everywhere and you just have to act like you're someone who might uh, buy it for your restaurant chain or something. Um, anyway so I was just like wandering around and you just pick up these samples and you kind of get in this like you know, kind of robotic routine of just stuffing yourself up up and down these aisles. And then I came upon one, and it turns out that it wasn't real product that they had set out. It was plastic sushi, but I was, you know... Shoveling? I, yeah. I had, like, um, I had sort of disengaged my mind, and plus I was in this sort of, like, you know... Sushi food, coma. Yeah, sushi <laughs> coma. And uh, it didn't register that I was holding onto a piece of plastic until it had reached my my lips and then you know I, I didn't eat it but like I did try and bite down on it and then I had this awkward moment where like <laughs> I had to try and like slip it back down on the counter before the people at the booth had noticed that anything was going on uh, which I think I successfully did but we'll we'll never know for sure it's possible I tried to eat a plastic grape this whole thing brought me back to a plastic fruit incident I stuck a lima bean in my nose once how did that go not good did you get it out? My mom got it out. Did you eat it afterwards? No. Okay. My mom took it out. Ha with what? I think tweezers. I wasn't that bright. I remember... This a was last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a boy in school, I don't know what grade this was, but he got a bean stuck up his nose. Mm -hmm. like, like in a... I don't know if he had to go to the hospital. I don't know what happened. He and I would have gotten along. You know what you could use for that? Something and that, that boy was Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. if, if you hadn't met your husband, right. he was probably That's the right. one for you. But I think it would have been a distant second. I think neti pot would work to wash that out. And I've never neti potted no. and I find it Ugh. upsetting and kind it's of disgusting. Upsetting. Yeah. Nothing, it's gross. Whatever, when you have holes in your body for stuff to come out and that stays out. Don't recycle it. Freaky. Don't put things into yeah. it. Yeah. Your nostrils are exit only. Yes. Um, 
this is an awkward segue, but Father's Day is coming up. And instead of getting your father some kind of bullshit like you normally would get him, I'm going to assume that normally like you get lima him. Like lima beans? Like a yeah. boat? <laughs> yeah. Don't get him a boat. Don't get him a lima bean. Both of those will go straight up his nose. <laughs> get him the man great grilling system. This is a super heavy, super good quality grill uh, these grill plates that you put on top of your grill and then you can make steak or you can make veggies or you can make chicken and it will taste like steakhouse or quality. Or seafood, which won't I like get this stuck idea. to the grill and mm-hmm. flake down into the flames. That's right. How well do they wash, it. Allison? Well, I don't know. I don't know the washing, but I'm going to say they wash very well because if you order the man grate through my website, AllisonRosen.com, just click on the man grate order, and it's only twenty dollars. It comes wow. with a heavy duty man grate grilling brush. Holy so that's a whole cleaning system off. right there. Yeah, they're super amazing. They're 100 percent cast iron, 100 percent made in America. Um, I've been saying this, but I'm going to say it again because it's true. Everyone who gets one or who has one talks about how great they are. All right. They uh, we we could give you one actually. I'll let's take do it. it. And Gary, let's get let's give Carrie a man great, and then let's listen as she finds out how heavy they are. Because I had heard no. people make jokes Don't about how they're like me. ground floor only, and they're heavy and I didn't think it could be possible that it was going to be as severe as what they were talking about. It's not about. in the shape of what I would have expected. There's two in the box. Oh, I see. They lay on top of each other. Yes. I'm going to try and pick it pick up. Pick it up. Here Look, we go. To the shape like a log. Holy jeez. I literally can't. <laughs> it's like the, uh, sword, I'm, it's I'm like the sword in the stone. You, and yeah, no. but no, it really is super wow. heavy. But that's... that's How could something so weight? heavy... Cost so little. I know. Allison. If they're just giving them away, but that's the weight of quality. Wow, that's right. And it's like try picking up your car. It's heavy because it's expensive. Exactly. <laughs> it is exactly like that. Thank you. It says right here how much. It, oh no, it doesn't. It says how big it is. That yeah. is cool. I thank you for that. You're welcome. Make and it a great pro- stocking stuffer. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. If you have a very very low fireplace, the stockings are right on the ground. Um, and, oh yeah, no, there was something else I was going to say, which is that it prevents flare-ups and it prevents dry meat. Wow. Is this a problem you guys face in your grilling? I'm not, I'm not joking with you. I'm going to use this tonight. Oh, good. Well, because let us know how it goes. we're doing barbecue chicken. Yay. Mm-hmm. See, another happy customer. You too could experience this kind of satisfaction. Just click on the Man Great banner on my site and take advantage of the Allison Rosen is your new best friend. $20 Man Great offer. Okay. Well, well, you guys, this time has flown by. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything more. I don't think so. Oh, please come out and see us live June 22nd. Carrie, Aww. thank you so much thank for doing this guys. show. Is there anything that you want to tell people to check out? Oh, yeah. The, uh, June 28th on FX, the anger management premiere, is at 9 o'clock. At 9.30... They're going to show a second episode, and I am the guest star on that second episode. So I'm that'll be fun. That. That'll and be fun. I don't even have. It's a very fun, very fun part, and you'll get to see and my, you're naked my boobs. In it. Yeah, yeah. The real yeah. use boobs. I mean, yeah. your real boobs, right? Re- my real boobs, right? As we like to call them. Okay. Do, do you have a what a YouTube series I or? No, I don't. Okay. Is that something? No, I on that panel that we were talking about before. Oh, there I was did. no, no, not YouTube. It it hasn't aired yet. I have okay. an AOL. It's a, a web series that's coming out on AOL, but it hasn't started yet. Okay, it's not a YouTube thing, but I have a crafting and parenting show that I'm doing for AOL. That's right. And that, it, we saw a clip, uh, and it was great. Yeah, it's fun. It's very fun. I interview celebrity funny moms, and we chit chat, and we make crap. What's that called? Making it up. Nice. Yeah. All right, and on Twitter. And the web, where can people find you? At Carrie Kenny, K E R R I K E N N E Y. And um, that's about it. I'm on, all over that. All right. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Allison Rosen. You can follow the show's Twitter feed at A R I Y N B F. You can email the show, A R I Y N B F, at Adam Carolla. We have a song, actually, that's just played. Of at. course you do. Of course we do. Allison wants your emails. Send them to this address.
Thank you, Ross Bergman. He must have and made thank at you, least Trap $40 Dog. on all of those songs together. You be surprised. Lucky. He has two nickels to rub together. And you can follow Gary at G. Patrick Smith. Um, please leave positive comments on iTunes. Um, because we love that. And I love you. And thank you so much for being here. For, oh, you can follow Dustin at Dustin Goot uh, on Twitter, except he doesn't tweet. And I'm going to keep saying that till you tweet. It's never going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure. <clears throat> that you implies, should also try crack. That it's implies really that shame affects me. Yeah. You're right. You're impervious to these kind of things. All righty then. Bye, you guys. Love you. Bye. Hey, do you know about the Allison Rosen show? Alison Rosen is your new best friend That's right, that's right Those good times don't seem to end That's right, that's right Alison Rosen is your new best friend Hey, do you know and Rose and Show. It's me again. I hope you enjoyed that episode. So, as promised, uh, I'm going to play another Angora song for you. This one is called Sick Dance. Or maybe it's called This Sick Dance. But no, it's called Sick Dance. Um, I wrote this one, and it was about something that I wrote about often, which was uh, unhealthy relationships that I felt drawn to and this sense that they're kind of all the same. And this one, I'm trying to remember the lyrics. It was, uh, there's something sick about the way you look at me. Am I in the crosshairs? Will you pull, pull the trigger? There's something sick about the way you make me feel a little disturbing and a little exciting. Feels so good to feel so bad. This sick dance keeps me coming back. But a little fun fact. When I said the lyrics now, I said it was, uh, am I in the crosshairs? But actually in the song, we sang, am I in the crosshatch? Because that's how I wrote it first, and and we all thought it sounded better. Um, but we realized that crosshatch is actually, I think it's like a s- sketching or an art term. I meant crosshairs. And in the retelling, crosshairs sounds better. But when you sing it, you want to say hatch for some reason. Um and then also, let's see, um, I remember, so the, it was, uh, like I said, it was, uh, there's something sick about the way you look at me, and my bandmates wanted to change it to, there's something sick about the way I, like, they wanted every, they wanted all the lyrics always to be more, um, like, the, the from the protagonist's point of view, the, they want the protagonist to be more powerful and, like, like, you're the one fucking someone else up, whereas I was more just the one being fucked up by the relationships I was in. So uh, I think I, I we fought, I fought that battle and I won. So the lyrics stayed the, the way they were, but it was possible that it was going to be kind of spun around to a different point of view, but that didn't happen. And um, 
the chorus. Let's see if I can remember. Um, oh, no, that was feels so good to feel so bad. This sick dance keeps me coming back. And then it goes back to, wait a minute, it's all coming back to me. I thought I'd, out, I'd outgrown you. I thought I had changed. Your face is different, but the feeling's all the same. Familiar and toxic. This closeness is toxic. Um, and then there's like an, a little breakdown part of the song, which is a super straight out of a self-help book. So you can find that and enjoy it or don't, but I think you will. Um, okay. As I said before, now I feel I've said too much and, uh, I wish I could just take it all back, but not all of it, just like a third of it. Okay. Here's a song. I still love you. Bye.